Okay, so our plan against d4, let's go with the kings in defense. Let's go g6, mostly knight to c3 is a move. He can play e4 in this position and we go d6. Okay, so that's short castle. Now, <clears throat> basically uh, in those structure you can uh, plan the move uh, c5. So let's try to understand, if we're going to c5, to play c5 immediately, he can take, we can then maybe consider jumping with the queen to a5 to put some pressure on the, on the, uh, on the knight. If he try to defend, I can take the pawn. If he's going to take another pawn, I can take this e4 pawn. And uh, this is also with a tempo on the knight because this knight is going to be pinned. Um, and yeah, we do need to be careful not, uh, not to mess up the structure, but I think that um, I want to give that a shot. Also, I can try to close down the position completely. So, I do want to see what he's going to do next. And basically against d5, we can go um, with the normal stuff. We can uh, plan also uh, e6. Okay, so basically decline. Now in this position we can take, we can also uh, still go for the move. Uh, queen a5, it seems like a very strong move. And in this position, after bishop uh, to d2, we can also even just take and uh, go back. Okay, so again, if he's going to take in this position, okay, so he's breaking the pin with his queen. Um, so, <clears throat> also he's creating a strong battery on our position, on h6. We do need to consider that. Um, I, still, I, think that uh, I still think that we can maybe try to build some more pressure on his position. So, knight c6 can become an idea. And you can also close down the position, and again we are going to play e5, uh, e6. Okay, so it's plan cl closing down the position at this moment. Um, so basically we can move the knight here to put some pressure on uh, c4 pawn. So he does need to move the knight. Uh, or defend uh, with, for example, uh, b3 in this position. Okay, so... Yeah, and we can always uh, fall back in, in case uh, we need to <coughs> we need to uh, keep the knight safe. But okay, uh, what I do like about this position is that we are opening up our diagonal for the bishop. So actually, like this position, we do need to be careful from uh, some ideas because he will try to maybe trap uh, the knight. But we can always move back to d7. So for now, I think that I want to create an attack on the queen side in, in order to try to open up the position from this side. And if necessary, we can always consider the move e6. A very natural move. Okay, and what I do like about... Okay, so basically we are falling back. What I do like about the position of the queen is that it's also support um, b5 in this position. Okay, so... If we're going to push b5 immediately, takes, takes, and as you see, uh, if the knight takes, the queen takes. So we can already go uh, with the move b5, and in case he's going to uh, <coughs> move his bishop back, we can also go uh, uh, rook b8. Okay, so this is also an idea. Uh, we do need to be aware of the kingside attack, but I think that playing only c5 was really essential to this position. So I am trying to open up the queen side and we're going to try to punish him for uh, keeping his king in the center. Okay, so as you see now the bishop is also um, keeping the, this diagonal open and we can also take immediately again we are trying to open up <coughs> this diagonal so we can also take immediately and if he's going to take with the pawn his pawn chain going to be weaker and I can also put the rook in between <coughs> so takes takes but you can try to pressure my position so I think playing a move and also we got a small idea is maybe to push no but is guarding the e4 pawn. 
I actually like the idea of pushing and then trying to win the rook, the rook somehow. This is also a nice idea, but hmm. yeah, I think this is actually quite strong because this rook is undefended. And we can move this knight with the tempo and win the exchange. So this is a small, uh, small and nice idea that we got on this diagonal. And basically, <clears throat> this is, uh, I think, a bit overextended for uh, white. Basically, it's really, really aggressive. You get uh, to have a lot of space. You're controlling the center a lot, but it's a bit overextended. And we can try to uh, find in between weaknesses and, and try to win material. And again, after this knight move, we can take one of those pawns with the tempo and win the rook. Okay, so I guess he, he, <clears throat> he, he got the idea that we are trying to do. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go back again. So basically you see that in this position uh, white got a lot of development around his uh, queen side. So after the move, for example, queen d2, after creating a strong battery, he's already, uh, he's already um, able to cast a queen side. So playing e5 uh, might be too slow in this position because it can try to launch uh, a kingside attack and yeah, we can be quite overwhelmed. So after playing c5, you also uh, can start to go for the initiative immediately, uh, prepare your uh, pieces if necessary, but uh, trying to open up the queen side and punish white for keeping his uh, king is in the center. now. If black uh, is not going to play this position precise, uh, we're going to have uh, some troubles because uh, we might uh, get on, get overwhelmed in this position because again, white has a large advantage um, keeping so much um, uh, space. Okay, so basically we, we are ready to win the rook. We need to pick one of those pawns because we do want to... Um, we do want to grab one of them, so basically the g pawn is going to open the h file, not a good idea. Uh, d3 will become with the tempo on the rook, not a good idea, so I think that e4 is the only move. And yes, now we can take. Okay, and after taking, also we can try to put some pressure on a2 pawn with our queen, so... Uh, we got some ideas in this position and notice that uh, he cannot really decline uh, the, the knight sacrifice because it's also come with the tempo on the queen. Okay, so <clears throat> basically in the future uh, we might be able to push uh, a4 completely to try to uh, just crush the queen side position uh, completely. We can also maybe consider to try to break open e6 in order to open the e-file. For our rook, okay, so it takes, we take the rook, okay, now <clears throat> uh, we don't want to get, uh, get this, um, um, we don't want to get this bishop traps, what I do want to show you guys is that this diagonal can be a weakness, right now it's defended too many times, but we still need to consider that we might be able to punish uh, uh, white if he's not careful. Okay, so for now we can also try to jump with the, with the knight to e5, we got a very strong attack on white position. So actually, if he's not careful and he's just going to go for this bishop, this is going, going to be a big win for us. Okay, because he was too busy to take the bishop. And we can take <clears> his <throat> queen. Now we don't have to take this bishop yet because we're going to lose this rook anyway. So let's take it. Let's take the knight. And as you see, his position is just collapsing. Uh, there's no going back from that. But it was a really GG. So basically, in this position, uh, again, if you are not careful, uh, you can try to launch a decisive uh, kingside attack. You already got h3 pawn. Uh, he, he got uh, <clears throat> a, develop, a development around the queen side. Uh, 
as a good game. So basically, <coughs> a fun match. Okay, so uh, yes, let's go for a rematch. Okay, so this was it for the video. I'm going to upload another video with these guys. So uh, make sure to check it out.